Hi Bobcats! In our last uh, video for chapter 20, we're going to take a look at nuclear power. Our objective is to look at how power can be supplied by nuclear fission and hopefully one day by nuclear fusion. The word fission just means to split. So nuclear fission occurs anytime a nucleus splits. This was first described by Lisa Meitner around 1940. Uh, as an example, we have uh, a uranium isotope being bombarded by a neutron, and that causes the uranium isotope to split, and we get a barium isotope uh, plus a krypton and three neutrons. Well, here's the interesting thing about this process. When we get those three neutrons, notice that these that a neutron is also a reactant. So if one of those neutrons, or even all three of them, can find another uranium atom in the sample, then this process can happen again and again and again. This is referred to as a chain reaction. One of the products of the reaction is also a reactant, so the reaction can, can continue taking place. This diagram is illustrating the potential power of a chain reaction. So if our uh, initial neutron finds one uranium atom and it splits, and that process creates three neutrons, and then each one of those neutrons finds another uranium atom to react with, we've gone from one uranium reacting to now three uraniums reacting. Well, if all three of those uraniums react, they will produce nine neutrons. And so we have gone from one reaction to three to nine, and the next step will hit 27 reactions. And so this reaction can just continue propagating and uh, really take off. The process is actually a little bit more complicated than what I've stated so far. It is true that when that neutron hits a uranium atom, the atom can split and we can get a krypton and a barium. But that's not the only possibility. When that uranium is struck by a neutron, other possibilities exist as well. We could create a germanium and a neodymium atom. We could create a tellurium and a zirconium atom. There are all sorts of possible outcomes. So the reality is a little bit more complicated than the simple scheme that I provided on the previous slide. Uh, this diagram here comes from figure 2010 in your textbook where they describe this in a little bit more detail. All right, let's put this into words. Uh, a chain reaction is illustrated by this nuclear fission process because that single neutron that starts the reaction can produce up to three neutrons. Each one of those neutrons can make a new reaction if we have what's called a subcritical mass. Those neutrons get absorbed by something else uh, or it's possible that those neutrons will be absorbed by something else. With a subcritical mass, less than one neutron from each reaction can find another uranium reaction to react with, and that pretty much stops the chain reaction. At a critical mass, every time one uranium atom reacts, we're able to get, two, we're able to get one more uranium reaction occurring, and so one, one neutron finds one uranium, and we simply sustain the chain reaction. But we can have what's called a supercritical mass, where more than one neutron uh, will find a uranium atom, and that causes this chain reaction to increase exponentially. A supercritical mass is what happens in a nuclear bomb. If the power of nuclear fission can be harnessed to run a power plant, the basic scheme looks something like this. Everything that's over here in this section is standard equipment for producing electricity. You have a, a thing called a turbine, which 
basically is just something that turns and then that causes a generator to produce electricity. So if we're talking about a coal power plant, then uh, the turbine is turned by steam that's created by burning coal. If it's a gas-fired plant, you burn natural gas and that generates steam and then that steam turns the turbine generating electricity. If we're talking a wind farm, uh, the uh, power of the wind turns the windmills, which turns the turbine, which powers the generator, which creates the electricity. So all of this part of the technology is standard no matter what type of power generation we're talking about. Now, in a fission reaction, um, the thing that's different is how the steam is generated. And so we have what are called fuel rods and control rods. The control rods are interwoven with the fuel rods, and they can be pulled up to allow one fuel rod more access to another fuel rod, or they can be pushed down in this diagram to isolate the, the fuel rods from one another. So the more they are pulled out, the more likely a neutron is to find another uranium uh, atom, and so the more critical the chain reaction gets. Um, as the, the reaction happens, the energy of that reaction is absorbed by a coolant. Sometimes the coolant that's used is sodium. Uh, sodium is a metal, but this is hot enough that the metal is melted and turned into a liquid. Um, that would be shown here in the red and the orange. Um, then there'll be a heat exchanger with water. And um, so as that hot sodium gets pumped through here, the water absorbs some of that and turns into steam. And then that steam flows out to turn the turbine to create the electricity with the generator. Um, and then that steam gets condensed and then recirculated back uh, to be heated up once again. There's another possibility for the generation of power from nuclear reactions, and that is to use nuclear fusion. Now, when we do nuclear fission, all sorts of radioactive waste products are created. But with nuclear fusion, we're looking at taking a hydrogen isotope, deuterium, reacting it with another hydrogen isotope, tritium. And when those two nuclei get fused together to make one nucleus, we're going to have a helium atom plus a neutron. So no radioactive waste products. It would be fabulous if we can actually get this to work. Um, this diagram or this photograph is showing you a type of experimental reactor called a tokamak, which is used in an attempt to generate power by nuclear fusion. Um, so far in the tokamak, they can get a nuclear fusion reaction to go as a burst, but they haven't been able to sustain it. And to be a reliable power source, that power has to be sustained. So it's still in the researchy um, uh, area. Hopefully in my lifetime, this will be converted into a real practical way of generating energy.